Hey gang, Dr. Steve here, and I'm completely excited for this next podcast for Wake Up Humans. I've known this girl for many, many years. I knew her as a student, um, and then a young doctor interning with a buddy of mine, and she's just a spark plug. And now she's a powerhouse mom, two beautiful kids. We were just together in Clearwater, Florida for a conference, and she shared from her heart from the platform and absolutely lit up the stage and, and warmed people's hearts. And I want to share her story because it's a powerful story and we'll see where this goes and where we're Dr. Erin McCary Davis, where she wants to bring us from South Lake Tahoe. What's up, girl? Happy Tuesday, Steve. That's it, girl. We appreciate you doing this. I know it's really early your time, but you've already done a run this morning and meditated and been out on the lake. You're in like God's country, girl. Yeah, it's really beautiful here. That's awesome. I told you I want to bring my kids out there and hang out maybe this summer when they've got no activity and just see a whole different part of the world, man. Yeah, it's amazing living here. It's really inspiring to get up in the morning. And <clears throat> a lot of people get to go to church in the morning. And when I have my kids in the morning or they're sleeping and I got a quick 30 minute run and I get to watch the sunrise on Lake Tahoe, it's the greatest connection for me. It's the closest I can get to God. So it's, it was a great way to start the day and to prepare for this interview. I, I, to unprepared I, for it. it kind of just cleared my head well you know it's funny you talk about clearing your head because uh listen your kids are adorable man i mean my wife fell in love with your <laughs> with your kids especially that little boy man what a little spark plug yeah they're absolutely about tammy a lot <laughs> how old are they um they just turned four uh less than a month ago and i loved how you talked about your husband i mean what a rock and, and a solid foundation for you in your life. You're, you sound like you're truly blessed there as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He's amazing. He is um, the perfect balance for me. Like the two of us couldn't be more, we're very, very different personalities and we do different things and we come together and we really just are like the yin and the yang. Now let's go back a little bit. Uh, where did you grow up? Are you, you're not from Lake Tahoe area, are you? I actually grew up in Connecticut, in Danbury, Connecticut. That's right. Yeah. 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 I grew up in Danbury, Connecticut. Um, and I moved, I came out to Lake Tahoe when I was almost 19 uh, to actually visit another chiropractor who I had grown up with. He wasn't a chiropractor yet. Mike Murado, Uh He had moved out here and we had grown up back east together. So I came out to visit him in Lake Tahoe for a Thanksgiving and... I fell in love and by Christmas, less than a month and a half later, I had packed up my car and left Connecticut and moved out to Tahoe. It's pretty damn brave for a young girl. Yeah. I mean, that. looking back on it now, I would almost say I was, I wasn't say I was running away, but I sort of was. I had, I had uh, gone through a lot the last couple years of high school and that first year turning 19 and I needed to get out of Connecticut and um, Tahoe and is what, is what pulled me away. You know, I look at, you know, I've got four daughters and my son, obviously, but I look at, uh, you know, my daughters in high school. Um, you know, I went through high school as a male. I see them going through it as a female and, and just the energy of it. And that's such a tough, tough spot for, for, I guess, any kid, man. You know, there's now that I'm an adult and I see the hormones and the changes and the identity shifts and trying to figure life out. It's tough. Yeah, it's, it's definitely tough. So you end up out of Tahoe and uh, what, what made you decide to become a chiropractor? Um, so when I was out here, I got invited to a lunch talk by this amazing chiropractor named Stu Bittman. Uh, he had been doing, he had had a practice for over 20 years in Tahoe. He was seeing hundreds and hundreds of patients and he did the safety pin cycle for me, uh, sitting at this place called the beacon, which is just a restaurant on the lake. Somebody had invited me to it. It was like a lunch and learn basically. And I got adjusted the next week and I became a chiropractor less than four years after that. What does the safety pin cycle mean to you? Uh, the safety pin cycle is that connection between our brain and our body and the transmission that happens through our nervous system. And uh, if you open up that safety pin, that's kind of what's explaining what a subluxation is. So it's the brain and the body getting disconnected and the chiropractic adjustment is, help, is what helps to reconnect it. And it's just such a simple analogy and you don't even have to use a lot of words. You can just show it to most people and they get that. 
So it's amazing about a story about a safety pin would change the entire course of your life. Yeah, and hundreds and hundreds of other people because of that. Absolutely. Thousands. I mean, you've yeah. got a you've got a mass massive practice now, girl, and it's uh, you know, it's funny because when I look at you, it's like you know, people that are listening, you're like this beautiful fireball, long red hair. And I remember when you were younger, you know, like running around DE, you were like this little scrapper with like the baseball hat on. But there's <laughs> such a piece about you now. Where does yeah. this piece come from? You know, a lot of people um, that you've heard that tragedies kind of define your life. Yeah. And um, I feel like I went through a lot of tragedy and a lot of blessings too, a lot of miracles. Uh, but I had to get knocked down a lot of times before I felt like I was here for a reason and I was here for a purpose. You know, I felt like I kept getting shown like, hey, there's something more that you need to do. Um, and I just learned a lot of hard lessons. So every time I come back to D, I feel like I've learned another lesson or I've let go of some sort of like I, we've talked about before of those boulders and backpacks that we carry around. Um, I feel like when I was young at DE, I was getting chiropractic. I was getting this lifestyle. I was getting chiropractic um, philosophy, and, but I wasn't clear enough yet for it to, to really ground me. I wasn't grounded yet. Right. Now you keep mentioning the word DE. So if, you know, we've got someone from Ireland listening to this, that's never heard that term before. How do you explain DE to them? DE stands for Dynamic Essentials, and it's a group, kind of, I guess you call it, a, it is a seminar that Dr. Siddy Williams put together um, for chiropractors to connect with each other um, and to fill you back up. It's the philosophy. It's, it's the life that we live as chiropractors, and every chiropractor and really every person should get to a DE. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain but it's the philosophy that runs my life. The and it's the only place that I've, well, it was the first place, one of the first places I've really felt unconditional love. Um, mm. You know, a lot of times I've done meditations with people and they've said, all right, go to a room where you felt pure love, go to a place that you felt safe and loved. And every time I've ever done one of those meditations with somebody, it always brings me back into the room and to this song that Dr. Sid would walk out to. Uh, so it's a space for me that I feel safe. It's a safe place where I have learned how to be a chiropractor, not how to do an adjustment, not how to um, run systems, but how to open up my heart and connect with the patient. Yeah. No. You know, and, it's, and what we're finding with, with DE now is we've got, you know, patients are coming to it now. So I think we always wanted to find it as a, you know, a place for doctors, but now we see CAs, spouses, and now doctors, patients are coming to the conference because it's, you know, they're hearing us talk about it and they're saying, well, everybody could use this, you know, because it's that lasting purpose love that we share in that room. And when you get out into the world and you start hitting tragedy or stress, mentally you have a place to go back to where you have a support team like you do in your meditations, et cetera. So that's pretty powerful. You know, you had mentioned uh, tragedy defines your life. Would you, would you want to go there with these people and explain maybe a tragedy or so that, you know, you had to overcome? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm one of four children. I'm the second. And when I was eight, my parents had their fourth child. Her name was Bridget. Uh, so my younger sister. And as you know, Steve, you have a lot of kids. When you're eight years old and your parents have a kid, you know, you're and you're a girl, you're basically a mom. You know, yeah. I was old enough where I took care of my sister, Bridget, like she was my own daughter. She was she was my my baby. Uh, and when I got into high school, it was my junior year of high school. Uh, for some reason, I was like getting ready for my junior prom. I couldn't watch my sister and my mom almost never had babysitters, but she wanted to paint the house. She really wanted to paint this hallway in our house. So she got a babysitter for Bridget, uh, my sister. And while she was at the babysitter's house, the babysitter was in the bathroom or, or doing something. And my sister got outside and um, fell into the pool. It was early spring and she actually drowned in the pool. Um, and that was right before I graduated my junior year of high school. Uh, 
And that was a huge tragedy for me and my family. I mean, as you can imagine, it's hopefully the biggest tragedy in my life. Uh, and I started getting really out of hand after that. I can honestly say I don't really remember much from 17 to 19. I was doing a lot of drugs. I was doing a lot of drinking. I was basically doing whatever I could do to numb my brain and disconnect my brain and my body. I did not want to feel anything. I didn't want to process anything. And uh, that's what got me out to Lake Tahoe. I had to get out of Connecticut where I was. I was going down a really, really dark road. I was an amazing student up until that point. I could have gotten a lot of scholarships. I could have done a lot of different things with my life. I had a, a very, very different path and future. Uh, and then that happened with my, my sister. And I know now that that's exactly, you know, that, that led me to who I am now and it's led me to where I was. But that was a dark tragedy that, that brought me out to Tahoe. Um, and started my path towards where I am now. How old was she when she passed? Eight years old. Ah, shit, man. Yeah, she was eight. She had a lot of other health issues. Um, she was born really premature as well, as, as we'll get to in a few minutes. My kids end up being premature as well. And my parents were doing the best they could. They didn't know about chiropractic. They didn't know about connecting people at birth after being premature. She, so um, she was in the NICU. She had a lot of breathing issues. She also, as my children went through, had some brain bleeds. So her whole life, she had major disconnect um, health-wise, but her smile and her life expression was 100% all the time. Mm -hmm. But she struggled with a lot of stuff, physically and mentally but her heart was clear. What's beautiful is you had, you know, she struggled with stuff, but she had your love there to kind of carry her through it for the eight years. I mean, that's yeah. devastating. And then, you know, your outlet becomes, you know, drugs and alcohol mm -hmm. and who could blame you for that? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I often talk about Tommy at DE and uh, you know, when he came to our office, you know, he was known around town as the drug addict. And when, when I learned his story, I sympathize with them. I was like, I can completely understand. I mean, it would have been much easier to commit suicide, but he was brave enough not to do that, but he had to numb himself because he couldn't face his pain, you know, of watching his dad commit suicide and then his brother hung himself and it was, he found him. So for you, by the grace of God, you went to Tahoe. It was like, you listened to that. We talk about that listening to your innate you know, and, and uh, Murado was that catalyst for you to just, let's go through another door here and just, and you were, you were able to find some healing. Mm -hmm. And then it's crazy is I didn't, I never heard that she was a preemie and what she went through. Mm -hmm. And then you go through that with your, with your babies. Yeah. Um, which was an incredible experience. Yeah. Yeah. It is pretty incredible. And it is like that path that you don't realize as you're taking it, you know, like, if you've ever gone whitewater rafting, you could get up to an area that looks completely insane. There's all these nutty rapids and you kind of just have to lift your paddle up and flow with those rapids and find like that smooth place in between the rough water. And I definitely did that getting out to Tahoe because I think I had like less than $600. I had yeah. this old Toyota. I drove across the country. Uh, I found a room that was basically a mud room in this like frat house where Mike Murata lived. He's now a chiropractor in Georgia. And uh, I lived there for 200 bucks a month, immediately got a job. And within a couple months, went to this health talk and met Stu Bittman, who was just, I mean, you couldn't make this pathway up. There's yeah. no way that us as humans could guide, guide this on our own or find right. that pathway. Yeah. You had a, you had a higher power guiding you to something and, and protecting you in the long run, which is, yeah. you can look back on it now. Like I'm laughing, thinking about you being in this mud room, <laughs> <It's literally> <laughs> but, <a mud> <laughs> but it was, it was a castle, mm -hmm. you know, coming from the pain and, and the suffering you had going on within. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And a lot of guilt, you know, I've had a lot of guilt leaving, leaving Danbury, Connecticut, uh, leaving my younger brother there who was still in high school. And just guilt that I, I wasn't um, I wasn't there when my sister died and leaving my mom and dad. Um, but I had to keep I had to keep going forward and keep going that way I was going. 
and uh, ultimately it, it got me to become a chiropractor. And, you know, I think a lot of times we think like, okay, I've, I've gone through this hard part. I went through all of this with Bridget. Now I found my path. I'm meant to be a chiropractor. And you think that's it. Like you think, okay, I've been through the hard tragedy. You know, this now it's time to coast and enjoy life. And I have enjoyed life, but I certainly haven't coasted because after I got married, me and my husband quickly got pregnant and we uh, found out at about like 20 weeks that we were having twins, which was amazing. And we were very excited. And uh, another couple weeks later, I went into preterm labor on my sister's birthday. And I know my sister was with me going through that preterm labor. So then my kids were born I was, I was bare, I wasn't even into my third trimester yet. So they were born extremely premature, um, premature born on Bridget's birthday. And they went through a lot of the same health issues. My sister went through, uh, it could have gone a very, very different way in that NICU and in the birth of my kids, uh, and that time in the hospital, and they would not be the healthy, perfect expressions of life that they are right now. Hey, you look at them now, you would never think that they went through what they went through. Yeah. Strong, healthy, vibrant. You know, a lot of times you see preemie babies and they've got a lot of breathing issues and things going on. So what do you attribute that to? Chiropractic. Chiropractic. I mean, isn't it so simple? I mean, it's the, you know, people, you know, they think they don't believe in chiropractic and they question it. And it's, you hear a story like that and it's like, well, how the hell has chiropractic helped your children? What would you tell them? Chiropractic has saved my kids' lives. And so has dynamic essentials and that lasting purpose of love. Because when my kids were born, you know, we talk about like an optimism and a pessimism like standpoint. The doctors were not optimistic about the birth of my kids whatsoever. Right. You know, right. and while before I had the babies, when they were still in me, but I was in the hospital, the um, people from the NICU came up and I was pretty messed up on, on this magnesium drug that they were trying to give me. I could barely see, but I know what they said and I know what I felt. And they were preparing me for a very bad future. They were preparing for one of them to most likely not survive, both of them to have what's called a grade four brain bleed, which potentially means your kids won't be able to walk. They won't be able to talk. Um, yeah, and tons of breathing issues. They told me there's no way my kids wouldn't be on oxygen. There's no way my kids would develop normally. You know, all they did was kind of push me down. And my experience at the NICU was awful, but I never left. I stayed in there every single second. They wanted me out of there as fast as possible. And um, I never left and I, I never stopped checking and adjusting my kids. You know, my daughter was under two pounds and we were still checking her Alice. Wow. Yeah. How, amazing. how long were, in, were they in there? It's kind of a funny story. They tell you with twins, like they'll never get out on the same day. And my son Hendrix was like this lazy hibernating lying in the NICU lion. He never had any sort of bumps at all. He just kind of like, it was like he was still inside of me in that incubator. Um, he just chilled and grew and grew and grew. But Jolene, my daughter, had a much more difficult time. When she was born, they, um, they put her on this kind of like a CPAP machine and they had turned it up a little bit too high and it had caused a pneumothorax in her lung. So her lung, you can imagine a baby under two pounds with a hole in one of their lungs and their lung completely collapsed, you know? So she struggled more. Then she had some, an allergic reaction to this medication they decided they needed to give her. And man, she is like just a fighter and a survivor. Uh, so getting back to how long we were in there for, they expected Hendrix to come home after about two months. They did not expect Jolene for the same. They said, Jolene will be in the hospital, Hendrix will go home. Um, and by day 63, which also happened to be the day before Mother's Day, Hendrix was coming home and Jolene had to stay in there longer. And the head of the NICU came in and said, happy Mother's Day. We got to get you out of here. Take your daughter home. We think she can do better with you than she can with us. That's and badass. It was cool. My husband went upstairs to our, our hotel room, took five minutes, packed all of our stuff up, and we got out of that hospital before they could change their mind. Um, so it was a miracle. They both came home after 63 days. 63 days. I mean, we're talking over two months. Mm -hmm. What uh, 
what got you through that? That that I mean, that's an eternity. You know, Tammy, as we speak, Tammy's working in the NICU at the children's hospital. She got called in this morning. And, you know, I heard her on the phone that they're overwhelmed and they need her help and they've got all these babies and and here she is getting ready to I'm like, you know, to, to imagine what the parents going through. I mean, that's that's eternity, girl. Yeah, it was eternity. And uh, I couldn't leave. You know, I just couldn't. No leave. way. Couldn't which means leave. you're which, which which means you're leaving your office behind, your home behind. Like you could care less about that, I'm assuming, at that moment. Absolutely. Where are you getting your strength from through this process? I, you know, God, <laughs> survival, being a mom, yeah. nothing in your whole life will make you stronger than being a mom. Amen. I'm sure it's the same way for dads, but for moms, like I, I don't think I slept more than an hour a day when I was in that NICU. You, know? wow. you just get through it. And what was the hardest part about me being in the NICU for me, other than like making sure that I was being the best mom for my children was watching what was going on in there. Uh, we were in Reno, Nevada, which isn't like a great a great city. So it's not like you're in, you know, some beautiful, rich Southern California area. We were kind of in the middle of Nevada and we were at the highest level hospital in that area. It's called like a stage four. So what I saw all around my kids were babies addicted to drugs, tons and tons of babies addicted to drugs, tons and tons of moms coming in there in handcuffs so they could see their kid and a lot of disconnection. Uh, because what happens is these women have babies, they're born premature because they're addicted to meth or addicted to heroin, whatever it is, and they get arrested right after they have the baby. And then the cops bring them in to see their baby. And then that's it. So you see these babies that are born out of love, born on drugs, born by parents who are not clear. And then they don't have their moms or dads to hold them. And there's nobody to be with them. You know, chiropractic and checking my kids' atlases, I know that saved their life, but I also know love and holding them and being there. Um, all I wanted to do in that NICU was run around to each baby and hold each baby and, and check each baby's atlas, and I wasn't allowed to. I tried to right. sneak some in, but I really couldn't. Right, right. And that was hard, not being able to help and serve more. I'm like semi-speechless right now, man. Like looking at you, your strength sharing this story and the and the, and you said it, there's nothing like the strength of a mom. You know, I saw that with my mother. You know, my parents ended up divorced and and the things she did and the sacrifices she made with three kids and pretty strong-willed kids and making sure we never really derailed was powerful. You know, and I think and, I, and it's one of the biggest things I see in my practice are these moms that just they're constantly serving and taking care of everybody else and they lose themselves in the process. And then, you know, I'm, I'm looking at you that you, you, you know, you gave all and sacrificed all and, but yet you're fit, you're, you're pure light, you're loving, but it's because of who you've surrounded yourself. Like you keep talking about the DE and the lasting purpose. And I think that's really what we need to cultivate. The, that's one of the beauties you get when you go to a DE chiropractor is the cultivation of love that you're going to get in a place to go and just, plug in emotionally, physically, and spiritually to lift you up, to give you the strength to go back out there in the world and take it on, which is what DE does for the doctors and staff and the lay people that show up. But a patient's also getting from you when they're walking into your office, which is why they need to hear this story. They're not just going in to treat sciatic or get a back crack. They're getting a powerhouse of love and leadership that's going to carry them through any stress or tragedy they got going on you're going to show them light. Yeah. And I, I will always make sure that I'm clear enough because I think that there's been past times when I wasn't clear enough going into work. And I realized after probably the last year of getting back to DE, how much I was carrying around with me and how much we need to be clear as chiropractors, as moms, as husbands, whatever your job is, you need to be clear so that you can serve better. Um, and you got, strange. for me, the only way I can really get clear besides a specific chiropractic atlas adjustment is going to DE and um, letting go of the stuff that I pick up in between. Because so I just have a lot of fear from, from going into that NICU with my kids. Oh, yeah. I mean, let's use you as an example. I mean, you, you mentioned the backpack, which is, you know, that's my next book, the backpack, which, you know, we've done podcasts, et cetera, but it's so true. But you also mentioned 
to make sure I'm clear enough. You made that statement. How do you make sure you're clear enough? What's your, what, what's your system for your life for that? Okay. So to get my Atlas checked and that's first and foremost, always right. make sure that I'm making sure my brain and my body are communicating with each other so that I can help others reconnect. That's my first thing. Second thing, make sure I go to DE. Uh, I don't know what could stop me from going to DE at this point, but by the last few weeks before DE, I know that my cup needs to be filled back up with love. And then it's the, the day-to-day stuff is, is where you really got to watch yourself because you can go to DE every three months and you can get your atlas checked every week. But every single morning I have to wake up and make sure that I clean up my house and my head. So for me, that consists of doing my 49 breaths, which is breath work that Dr. Sid Williams taught us to do. Uh, and then I write. So whatever I'm feeling, whether it's good or bad, whether it's a sentence, a word, or 10 pages, I write. And then the next thing is I run. And it's 90% of the time it's running. Sometimes I'll get on a bike and sometimes I'll just go outside and walk and do squats, but I make sure that I move my body. Um, Cause for me, that's, that's when I feel the most grounded is when I'm, I'm clear from exercising. I get quiet when I run, even though I listen to like, great loud music, uh, I All still right. like heart gets quiet. And yeah. I see the beauty of Lake Tahoe and it, and it just reminds me of God's presence in my life and heaven on earth. Oh, that's a blessing. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's, uh, you got me completely humbled right now, man. And I just feel so light and just freaking awesome. And I know people are going to love this and innate keeps dropping this in on me right now. Your kids listen to this 20 years from now. What do you want to say to them? What do you want them to hear from mom? looking at your children today what's your what's your aha moment message to your your two little babies that are now let's say 24 25 years old that they're just miracles and that's they're here for a reason you know they're here for a purpose because they fought hard i fought hard and a lot of people love them and their life is meant for something And I want them to always remember that, you know, a lot of people, like people love my kids. I don't know. Yeah. We'll see strangers and my kids are exuding a constant, constant vibration of love. And they have, you guys, Hendrix and Jolene, you have always had so much love to give that I want you to know that you're here on earth for a reason, whatever it is. I know you're going to figure it out, um, but you're just a blessing and a miracle. What's that? What's that? Their miracle too for me is that I wouldn't be who I am as a chiropractor if it wasn't for them. So their gift and their purpose on this world is more than just for them. They've helped so many other people by helping me. Yeah, they helped be a major catalyst in your life. What what's their birth date? What's the actual birth date? March 10th, 2017. You know. Bridget will always be a part of your life and their life. You know, it's that part of the beauty of the backpack. That was your biggest boulder that, you know, you could put on the shelf now and realize that Bridget helped bring those girls, those that your daughter and son through that process and gave you strength. And, you know, you and your husband, your relationship is locked in there. And when your kids wake up someday and it's, they maybe find out about this and hear what you just said to them, was such a beautiful angelic moment of like, they're a miracle and God has them here for a reason. When every single person realizes that God has them here for a purpose and they can tap into that life is never the same again. Girl, I love you more than you can believe. I'm proud of you. You should be proud of yourself, your husband, your kids. And I'm going to come raid your property with my five kids. And we're just going to, we're going to, we're going to sell it by, my wife loves you guys, man. She does. She, she was talking about the kids yesterday and I'm just in that phase of my life where I, uh, I just don't want to show up at DE and see people. I want to celebrate and, you know, drink coffee and talk and just hike and just be blessed and enjoy the friendships and the, and the circle of friends that we've, that we've created to carry us through tough times and yell yet celebrate the great moments as well. So I love you. Okay. I love you too, Steve. Thank you, baby. Okay, I'll talk to you soon.